Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to, <clears throat> number one, thank you, Dr. Spudis, for your testimony. Uh, you mentioned three things I'd like to, to hit on. Uh, number one, you talked uh, about three specific missions, uh, cislunar habitats, uh, resource extraction from celestial bodies, and ron rendezvous and proximity operations as it relates to uh, doing servicing of satellites. Um, and and uh, you were specifically talking about the human components of each of, each of those. Um, and, and, and I would like to, um, to bring up an issue that I think is important that we need to be talking about here on this committee, and that is this, that there are commercial entities raising private capital right now that are capable of doing these missions, willing to do these missions, uh, and these private companies, um, the risk is no longer raising capital. The risk is no longer even technological, although there is some risk there. Their major risk, from what I hear as a member of this committee, this subcommittee, the major risk is, is regulatory. They need certainty. They need to know that when they develop these technologies, there's not going to be a government entity out there that says, no, you can't launch, or no, you can't do that mission. Um, and, and these are the challenges that we, I think, need to be addressing uh, and looking at. When you think about remote sensing, uh, NOAA has the authority to license you know, remote sensing satellites. When you think about uh, communications, the FCC has the ability to license communication satellites. But those three missions that you specifically mentioned, uh, the, these are non-traditional kind of missions that uh, we haven't been doing uh, commercially yet. And yet, uh, right now we're raising capital. I say we, private companies, are raising capital to do these missions. And we need some kind of regulatory assurance that when they are ready, that there is nobody that's going to put the, put the halt on, on, their, on their efforts. Um, so thank you for bringing up those. And, and of course, I think your vision for um, cislunar space is, is critically important. I'd like to, uh, the, the question I'd like to ask goes to, and I know a number of other people have touched on this, but I want to be really clear. Uh, and I know, Mr. Young, you're not here representing the NASA Advisory Council. I know you're a member of it, but you're here uh, op you know, operating independently. Um, but the NASA Advisory Council warned that NASA runs the risk of squandering precious national resources if they move forward with the asteroid redirect mission. Later, the NASA Advisory Council unanimously adopted a finding that it thinks NASA should change the asteroid redirect mission into a mission that would go all the way to Mars and thus be more closely aligned with the goal of sending humans there. Mr. Young, two years ago, you went as far as to say that the ARM proposal, quote, dumbed down NASA. Mr. Spudis, your testimony states that, quote, ARM offers few scientific and scant operational benefits, unquote, and that, quote, in terms of scientific and operational importance, it is barren of real accomplishments and irrelevant to the future human deep space missions, unquote. Dr. Summerer, your testimony highlights that the NRC panel that you participated in found that NASA's current plans, which include ARM, have, quote, serious deficiencies with regard to the significance of intermediate destinations, logical uh, feed forward, dead end systems, and exceedingly high development risk, unquote. That is not good testimony regarding the asteroid redirect mission from any one of you. My question is, is really simple. Why, if this is, if this is there's, there's, there's this much consensus, why is the administration still trying to force this mission on NASA, the scientific community, and the American public? And I'd like, I'd like you guys to speculate on that, if you would. Uh, I have one minute left, and I'll just leave it to each of you. I'll start with you, Mr. Young. Or you guys can decide. Uh, fairly, fairly early in President Obama's administration, he said, not going to the moon, we're going to an asteroid because we've been to the moon. Uh, we did not actually have the capability to go to the asteroid um, at, for the foreseeable future for reasons that we've discussed. I think it is likely that that's an embarrassing position to be in, although I don't know what it's like to be president. And there were some people who uh, came up with an idea that sort of got astronauts into the business of playing patty cake with something that came from an asteroid, at least, and that seemed very attractive. Um, but I agree with all of the statements that I think it's a, it's, a, it's a mission which has no real purpose, especially in the context of deep space exploration. Mr. Young, did you want to add to that? No, I, th I think I basically agree with the comment. I, I, 
I don't really know the answer to your question, obviously. Um, the reason for my comments and the other comments is that, uh, again, I feel so strongly that we need to be doing those things that are critical to a successful human to Mars program. And, and this in the mission, the asteroid retrieval mission, it is far below threshold as to a mission that contributes to that endeavor, in, in my view. And again, to come back to what you meant, Revolution and NAC, one of the things that's argued is, well, out of that mission, we get some technology, and the technology is on the solar electric propulsion tug. And I think that's true, and the SES technology is needed. So do that technology. Don't encumber it with all of the other activities that's, what, that's there. And I think that's why the NAC said, look, a terrific thing would be take an SES, fly it to Mars, bring it back, and demonstrate the technology in a manner that it'll ultimately be used relative to Mars. And I, I'm out of time. Mr. Chairman, in closing, I would just like to say that uh, going back to my original statement, as these private companies are raising capital and they're retiring technological risk and they're ready to launch, we need to make sure this committee is 100 percent committed to enabling and allowing them to do what they've, um, what, what, they're, what they're supposed to be doing, which is uh, advancing the human condition with, uh, with commercial and private sector capabilities. So thank you so much. Yes, sir.